In a previous video, I spoke about the Git workflow that we use in my research group. In this video, I just wanted to share some extra Git concepts that's useful when using an, our Git workflow. There's um, one quick thing that I also just wanted to know. There's an alternative from creating a branch here. So you get, um, get checkout branch and then a new feature branch and then you push that. Uh, an alternative is that you just create a branch directly on, on GitHub. There's this nice instruction in the GitHub repository um, where you can just um, follow along for how to create to create the branch. So what I would do here is I would go here, I would say view all branches, and then I would say new branch. I would give it a name, another feature. I would say create new branch. Here on main, what happened was we created something else and that has created a new branch here and that branch is called another feature. Okay, we can go to this branch. Maybe we change something small on this branch. Let's just change the readme. Um, an example of branching. We make a little commit there on this other branch. Commit changes. Okay, so we're we're working on this another feature branch that branched off from main. Okay, and if you can see that, okay, cool. There's been some some changes now to this branch. These changes haven't been pulled into our main, that's fine. Okay, locally, if we now look locally what happened here and we do git branch, um, we only have main. We used to have new feature, but that's been deleted. And so we don't actually have this another feature branch. Okay, so what we'll do is if we do git branch remote, it actually doesn't show me another feature and branch. So what I will do is I will do git pull. Okay. And that tells me, oh, I've pulled in some extra information here. There's another branch here. And if I now do git branch, it still doesn't show me the branch. And that's because tracking information hasn't been um, added. So if I then do git branch remote, it shows me, oh, listen, there's another um, branch here, another feature. And what I will do is to get access to that branch, I will do git check out another feature. And that will actually set up the tracking information so that locally, what I will what will happen then is another thing will be added here. And I will have another feature sitting there. And then I can actually make changes to that. So if I could do git checkout, branch another feature setup, track remote branch another feature. So that just means that whatever happens here will get reflected here and we've set up tracking information and vice versa. So if changes happen here and I do a pull, then it's going to be pulled into that branch. Okay, so let's just see if I am on the right branch. I'm on the, uh, another feature branch. I can now make changes here and then push that back if I want to. Um, okay, let's just do that. So we edit the script, print another line. Okay, that's misspelled. Python new script does that. Git commit added uh, another line. Clear the screen. Git push. And so what's what's happened now? Just very quickly is we've added a little point there, and this is the new commit that we've added. That isn't reflected here. And what I'm doing is I'm just pushing that back there. So I'll just do git push. Okay, and if we now go to the remote repository and we click on another feature, you can, um, we can look at the commits and that added another line is now also remotely. That hasn't been merged into the main. So remotely what it looks like now is we have another little dot there that hasn't been merged into main because I need to create a pull request. Um, but you can you understand the main point. Okay, excellent. Let's just go to main again. Cool. And if you look at main now, that another line thing isn't here because main hasn't been updated. And that's exactly what we want. That's that's actually the, the big points that I wanted to make. This one final thing that I very quickly wanted to mention, and that is what happens if you are 
I'm working on, on some feature branch and um, things actually change on the main branch. How do you incorporate that? And that's, it's not that, that, not that difficult, but I wanted to, to illustrate that. So let me just quickly make another branch and then set things up so that it um, looks more or less like this. I'll work on this repos repository. So ton a ton of stuff has happened. Let's just pretend like there's like a dot, dot, dot there. A ton of stuff has happened. We've reached this point now. Um, we've, um, we've pulled that point and now we're going to create another branch locally. Okay, so what we've done now is we um, basically had a ton of main stuff. We um, cloned all of that locally, that was reflected. And then what we did was we branched after we create a new new feature branch. The first commit is called the small change. And then the second one has, uh, uh, um, has a me message called updated documentation. Now, this is all fine. You've seen all of this before. What happens now if someone on the main repository, on the remote repository, has you know branched off, created some stuff, and has now merged that into the main branch? And what you want to do is before you continue fiddling on this local branch, you want to make sure that you've actually updated and has the, have the most recent main branch. So this could happen. Let's go to new project here. So, um, we're on the main branch here. We're on the main branch here. And so if we look at new script now, let's say someone has added another line here called, um, let's say the user added something here. Wait, they added something here saying um, uh, change from another user. Okay, commit changes, commit changes. Now just pay attention here. So this is what the new script file looks like here. If we look at the new script file on our local copy, it looks different, right? So it doesn't have that line, it has that line. And we want to basically make sure that the stuff that reflects here remotely is also reflected locally. Or on this diagram, what's happened is someone has changed main. And so what ha what's happened is, what's happened is there's been another commit here. Okay, and what we want to do is before we continue on our branch, we want to make sure that we have these changes as well. What we would do now is we would first check out the main. Okay, now this main, if we do status, um, this main, now this main still only has these two items in there or the items up to this point. It doesn't have that very last item. It doesn't have the newest commit. So if we look here, it doesn't have this commit with a, a change from another user. It's not there. It doesn't have the update new script dot pi. That doesn't. That's not. Another change is here. The merge pull request is here, but this update new script is not here. So what we need to do is what's the command? We do git pull. Okay, and that pulls in the information from here. And if we now do git log, you can see that update new script has been added um, locally. So what, what this has done is on this little diagram here is we've got this little arrow and that's been brought in. And we now have that dot there. This though is, hasn't been reflected on the branch on some feature branch that I'm currently working on. Okay. So what we would do now is the following. We would check out the some feature branch. Okay, we can do git log. And what we can see here is that actually this change, the new script um, that has been added, the update there, it's, it's actually not reflected here. Okay, so how do we get that in here? What we would do now is we would do a git merge main. And let me just explain what that will do is it will take what, what's happening on main and it will incorporate it into this branch here. So what will happen is this branch will get moved forward and the changes from main will get updated. 
into my some feature branch. Okay. Now this is really painful because now what happened was there was a merge conflict. Hopefully this doesn't happen, but if there's a merge conflict, um, it makes life pretty painful. And this is where you start to Google around to make sure that, that everything is, um, is being sorted out. So basically two people changed this, um, this file and one of them had this change and the other one didn't. And now you need to decide what you're going to do. And so it's very nice uh, on Git. They have a, a nice um, little instruction to tell you how to deal with merge conflicts. Okay, so I always open up this page and in the repository, it will tell you exactly what has happened and what the problem is. And um, basically what they're saying is, okay, well, edit this file to look the way that you want it to look. So I want it to have all the changes from both, from, um, both branches and I want it to look like this. And then I would, and then I would go back here. Um, I would do git status to see what the fuzz is going on. It's been modified. And what I would do is I would do git add this, which means I'm adding the script to the, um, to the area that I want to change. I do git status. This has been modified and I do it git commit did a merge with a conflict. Okay. And now if we look at this, we do git log, you can see that the update new script, the thing that happened from main was actually pulled in here. And then we did a merge to make sure that everything was correct. I hope that makes sense. That was actually a pretty uh, tricky situation. And I didn't foresee that there were, I wasn't planning that there would be a merge conflict, but it was good for you to actually see how to deal with that situation. The more typical thing is that um, someone made changes to other parts of the code and you just want to merge that in and then you won't actually have to deal with this merge conflict, but it was good for you to see. One last thing that I haven't really spoken about and I will let you figure that out in your own time is git ignore files. So they're very useful. You saw I did git add and this, and that actually, um, that tries to add all the files in your, in your current directly to the, basically to the git tracking system. And before and earlier on in the video, I did git add new script that only adds that specific file. But if I do git add um, dim, then it adds all the files in the directory. Now, the problem is very often there's files that you actually don't want to track. For instance, binary files that get generated. If this is a C++ project, you do not want to track binary files because it will differ from user to user. And then you'll just end up having a ton of merge conflicts and life will be miserable. Or if it's like a LaTeX repository, you don't want to track PDF files that gets generated in the repository. So you actually git add um, period is a very nice command, but you very often don't want to run it because it's just going to add everything to, to your tracking information. And that's where git ignore files become really useful. So git ignore files is a, lot of, is a little file that you place, you basically make a dot git ignore file here and then you add some commands to that file which tells it ignore some specific files so just as an example you can go to github git ignore and they actually give you pretty nice git ignore files for a ton of different um, like project types so if we just look for um, let's just search for uh, tag git ignore um, what I use often when I use um, git for for later then you can see the this git ignore is very long, but it, for instance, it ignores all the auxiliary and log files that LaTeX normally generates because you do not want to keep track of those things. You don't want to um, track PDF files. And so this is a nice example of a LaTeX git ignore, but I'll let you figure that out on your own. It's just very important that you only track the relevant files for your repository and you don't track anything else. The last thing I wanted to show you was that there are some nice graphical user interfaces for Git and I don't actually use them. I, I know the command line is a little bit archaic, but it works well, but I do sometimes like just visualizing what is going on. And um, so if I do Git checkout main here, Git branch, just want to see what the situation looks like. Um, I can run, th there's a couple of, nice graphical user interfaces. The old school one that I used to use a lot is Git K. 
and you can see that the interface it looks old um, but it's very nice you can see that there's so there there was a little branch and it's branched off and so on and you can actually see for every commit what has happened um, while I was preparing for the video I found this other tool which I'm using now which is git g okay um, it looks very similar, but just a little bit more, you know, uh, 20th century. And it's nice because you can view the branches and the little diagrams that I grew more or less, they match up with, with these type of diagrams. Git G is kind of nice because it also allows you to do some commits and things. And for instance, you can switch branches by double clicking. And now I've actually switched to this branch and things like that. So Git G another nice um, graphical user interface for Git. Finally, if you want to read more, there's um, two things that I really used um, to, to shape my thinking about Git. The one is a successful Git branching model. It's a little bit older, and I think the, the guy that wrote it, he's thinking about this has also changed over time, but it's very nice to read that. And then the GitHub flow kind of methodology is really what I illustrated in this video and just apply to our specific context. I hope this helps.